Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to start a Django project. Before starting a Django project, there are a couple of things that I would like to get out of the way and then we are going to dive into the practical and awesome stuff. One, that I need to uh, tell you something about the structure of these lectures right at the beginning. Now in our previous um, application the way that we went ahead was we had a specific lecture and in the next lecture we grabbed the code from the previous lecture and we built on top of that so all the lectures were progressive lectures and they moved in a linear fashion we didn't jump around a lot or not not like a little bit for that matter but the way that Django works is that Django is not a linear framework. It's a full-blown Python web framework. It's not a micro framework like Flask, which is easy to work with and easy to get started. It is easy, but there is a lot of different, because it is popular, there's a lot of different packages, modules, and a lot of different files at the same time that we need to work with. So uh, throughout this section, uh, unfortunately, I will not be able to provide you with that linear fashion, the way that we coded a Flask application. That was possible with Flask, but it is not possible with Django. You're going to see that in like a few minutes that what it, what it is, what is it, what is it exactly that I mean uh, that we are going to jump around from one file to the next file and whenever we write some code we either delete that and replace it replace it completely or we just build on, build on top of that code you're going to see what I mean throughout like in, within this lecture you don't need to go to the next lecture to understand what I mean the only thing that you need to take away from this point is we are not going to follow that linear fashion like one lecture has small code then in the next lecture we build on top of it we add more code no 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 we are going to jump around between files because as far as Django is concerned there is a lot of files that you need to work with but I'm going to explain everything in detail uh, however if there is any confusion uh, it would be better, uh, it is my recommendation to you that you check out the videos. At any time, if you're confused, do not specifically go to that specific part in your code. If you're unsure about a specific part of code, you can do that. But if you're unsure about why that code works the way it does, then you need to go to that video for that specific uh, piece of code that you're looking for. So first things first um, we are going to talk about so that was the first thing the second thing is that I would like to introduce Django first then dive into what it is um, not what it is dive into how we can work with Django so Django is a Python framework I'm going to keep this short it is a Python Django is a Python framework for writing web applications it focuses on productivity to write applications quickly while writing less code now Django is so-called a batteries included framework which means that there is literally a ton of libraries and functionality to solve almost any issue that you can think of also to help you develop code faster there are a lot of Django packages to make your life easier when creating Django applications now there are five major parts that come installed with Django I'm going to talk about all of them one by one uh, first uh, that Django has a powerful object relational mapping API Django ORM which allows us to write pure Python classes that represent database tables this actually means that you do not have to write SQL queries to interact with your database we have already covered uh, ORMs thoroughly in, before in three separate sections for three different relational database management systems which were SQLite, MySQL and Postgres in our SQL Essentials course so when I say Python classes represent database tables you exactly know what I mean 100% uh, second is, the second feature is that Django whenever you write classes uh, that represent data Django can create an admin interface we have looked at it briefly uh, and it is a web page interface for uh, editing content and it is generated automatically by Django so you don't have to write any kind of code for it 
3. Django is equipped with a small but powerful templating engine for creating HTML web pages along with URL mapping tools for our web applications. 4. Django has a powerful URL mapping for the web applications. And 5. Django can handle HTML forms on its own. So you do not have to write any HTML input. The form, the plan a new meeting form, that is generated completely 100% by Django, which is really cool. That's why Django is a full-blown application. It helps you create web applications very, very quickly. Now, enough of the theory. Let's j dive into uh, code. Now, I have already created a, a virtual environment and I've already installed Django. The reason that I've done that is because it is going to take like almost five to seven minutes for me if I redo it. So you just go ahead and I'm going to give you the command. It is pip env, which is going to create a virtual environment. And within the virtual environment, you just need to install Django. So you're going to have pip env install Django. And we, are, we will be using the latest version of Django, which I believe uh, at the time of recording this video is 3.2. So if I go there and we can see it is 3.2.3. So again, pip env um, install Django. First, go ahead and install Django through this. If I just go ahead and uh, click on it, it is uh, it has already installed Django. That's why it's just going to like go over it, like breeze through it. After you have installed Django, you can see if you come inside the pip file, we have the Django and it has been installed with uh, along with all of its modules now so next up uh, we are going to grab the django admin command to create for us a django project now uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to say django dash admin start project so so far so good right django dash okay i, I probably should zoom in uh, I think it is better. Let's just zoom in a little bit more. So I'm going to remove everything I've written and I'm going to say, so what, what, what it is that we are going to write in here, I'm going to say Django. I'm going to zoom out because it's not going to be zoomed in all the times. So I'm going to say these uh, b uh, initial commands are a little bit tricky, so you need to get them right. So it's going to be Django dash admin. Then we are going to say start project. And then you need to provide the directory for it. Keep in mind, you don't have to create it in the Explorer. You have to provide the name for that directory. And I'm going to provide it meeting underscore plan. Let's just hit enter. And the, there is not going to be any result to this command. But if you come inside this meeting planner, you can see inside the Explorer, we, you can see that we have a meeting planner. If for some reason you can't see it, just go ahead and refresh it. You should be able to see. If again you can't see it, it means that you have mistyped the command. So what do we have within this meeting planner? If I open it, I do have another directory by the same name in there. So at this point, I'm going to zoom out because we'll be working with a lot of files and I cannot have them all zoomed in. So uh, we have another directory, which is the meeting planner. And then we have the, py, we have the manage.py Python file. Now we are going to use this file to run Django command by changing the directory to the uh, to this meeting planner. So I'm going to say cd meeting planner. And now within this, in here, you can see that this is the name of the folder. And then it says slash meeting planner. So if I do an ls, what do we have in here? We have our meeting planner. And then we have a manage.py. So if I do cd dot dot, we go one level up. If I do an ls here, what do we have in here? We have already talked about command line, right? ls, it is going to list the current items and folders. So if I hit enter, we have a meeting planner, a pip file, and a pip file lock, a lock file. And if I do cd meeting planner it is going to change directory to this folder if i do ls here it's going to show me a meeting planner and a manage.py 
There we go, a meeting planner and a manage.py file. So uh, next up, what I would like to do is uh, I would like to show you how you can run Django server. It's going to be different the way that, uh, from the way that we have used to run the Flask server. For the Flask server, what we had to do was just run that specific file. But to run a Django server, we need to run the Django server on this manage.py file. So I'm going to say Python. If you are on Mac, you have to write Python 3. Uh, you know that, right? So uh, I hope that problem resolves soon. Um, the problem that if you write a Python keyword, it represents Python 2.7. But if you write Python 3, then it represents Python version, version 3. Uh, I'm not really sure if that issue is still within Mac. If Mac still has that that extra letter that you have to provide uh, I don't have it I've seen it online a lot people are talking about it but I because I don't own a Mac I'm not really sure if that is going to be like that just make sure that it is uh, the current Python um, uh, version that you're working with like 3 above 3.9 above so I'm going to say python manage.py. Now, because we are within the meeting planner folder, we have access to this manage.py file. And from there, I'm going to say run server. So hit enter. And there we go. So here I have to zoom in. Now you can see it says you have 18 unapplied migrations. For you, the count could be slightly lower or upper. Don't worry about it. We are going to apply these migrations, but first we need to understand what they are, and we are going to talk about them later on. And what do we have in here? In here we have Django version uh, using settings, this settings. We have starting development server. Keep in mind, this is a development server. It is a very, very horrible bad practice to use development servers for production. You need to use a production server. But for teaching purposes, it is going to do the job. This is the port at which our website is live, and we can quit the server. It says control break, but you can just do control C, and it is going to quit the server. So I'm going to rerun the server again, python manage.py run server. Another cool thing about Django is that because we are not moving in a linear fashion, we don't have to like rerun the server to make sure the changes that we have provided in the code they're being applied you don't have to do that all right because uh, this whenever you run this these are this is everything that we are going to work with so all the project is contained within this meeting planner folder or directory it's not going to be like it's not going to overflow out of it it's going to be all contained within here now, first off, I'm going to go to this uh, URL. Then I'm going to tell you what this db.sql3 is. You just click on it, and here we go. It says the install works successfully. Congratulations. So what is this? Uh, this is going to be the default um, web page or a demo web page for an empty web application. We are going to replace this with our own application. Now, let's go for this uh, address, this URL. So the part which is 127.0.0.1, this is a special IP address reserved for your local machine, which means it is our local host. So on my machine, it is my local host. On your machine, it is your local host. For Flask, we had port 5000. For Django, we have port 8000. This is the port where Django server is listening on for incoming HTTP requests. It is a Django process that is listening for incoming HTTP requests on port 8000. What do I mean by HTTP request? So if you refresh the page, what does that mean? in the world of HTTP. It means that you have just created or made an HTTP GET request to grab this request, to grab this web page and show it in the browser. So in the server log, we should see a GET request. So if I refresh that and if I come in here, 
and if I uh, let's just zoom in you can see that at this time 1134 we had a get request at what what was the URL it is just a simple slash and we know a simple slash means that it is the root directory or the root URL for our entire application and the status code is 200 it means there wasn't any errors we do have a favicon 404 don't worry about that so if I just reload this page again and if I come in here we just created another HTTP get request we are familiar with this process right so the this port is just basically responsible for listening on for listening to these kind of HTTP requests that port 8000 Django is listening on this port for any incoming HTTP requests so uh, what I would like to do here is I'm gonna close the server I've just uh, closed the server and I'm gonna expand this and now I would like to talk about these files a little bit just to make sure we are on the same page um, now um, before actually talking about this let's go ahead and let's refresh the page because the server is cl closed we can see that we cannot access we cannot access that uh, we cannot access the server because the server is down now the reason for this is that currently there are no processes that listen for this port 8000 at our local address which is 127.0.0.1 so when there is no process listening for any incoming HTTP requests on this port 8000 we are gonna we are gonna have an error so if you want to work with with the server you need to run it otherwise the server is down and there is no process listening for them now taking a look at our uh, current directory we can see that we have the db.sqli database file which Django created when we ran the server we did not create that currently there is no data in it but we are definitely going to come back to this and we're going to add data we can see that there is no data by going to our db browser from there let's just open a, any a database I'm gonna go to um, this within meeting planner and let's just open it so you can see we don't have any tables no indices and no nothing uh, we also have a second meeting planner folder uh, which represents the core project folder and if I open it up you can see all these files they were created using the Django admin command Django admin start project so what are these I'm gonna start from the top the first one in it this is empty and we know what this is this is here just to make sure this meeting planner is treated as a Python package ASGI and WSGI they're used whenever you want to deploy your website the settings uh, .py file is where uh, the project is defined in so let's just go ahead and open it up and just I'm just going to close the terminal just close uh, make this smaller as well so within here this is the settings for all of our project so within this file we're not going to do a, a ton of things we might just add like a couple of apps that we will we would have to install and applications in the world of Django are different than in any other programming language we're going to get to those don't worry about it so again we are going to use the settings.py file throughout this section to configure a project we also have the urls.py within the urls.py we put the code that will assign urls to pages that we are going to create so all of these files again they were created using uh, the django uh, Django admin command that we ran and now you can see it says uh, could not be resolved let's just go ahead and let's select that environment and the environment is selected perfect and I'm going to close this auto pip 8 is not installed let's just go ahead and install auto pip 8 as well so with this our lecture comes to an end uh, in the next lecture what I would like to do is to show you how you can uh, create a Django application 
and throughout these lectures we are going to create our own application as well but I, I have to make sure that the fundamentals are solid so by the towards the middle and the end of this section when things get advanced and out of hand you're not confused that's it for this lecture see you in the next one